I'm negligent labor power systems. Um, right now what we're going over is we're going over a competitor's 5000 BTU DC system 12 volts comparing with our 7000 just for overall um, space that it's taking the overall size of the unit as well as the uh, as well as the consumption what I wanted to do is show the two of them side by side run both systems we're gonna be looking at the amperage draw of the unit so we're going through a shunt to be able to view what each unit is going to be consuming, as well as the actual BTU production of the of the two systems that we're going to be doing with some Testo Smart Probes. I've already done the BTU calculation on the uh, on the first unit, and I the the system is set up to run one 12 volt system at a time. So unfortunately, I'm going to have to show how one's running, and then switch to run the second one. The first unit I'll be starting with is going to be the competitor system, the 5000 BTU. And I'll show you the information on that one. And then we'll run the our 7000 BTU, our SC7 DC, and show the information, how, what the BTU production and some of the differences between the units. So looking over here, we have a 5000 BTU unit and we're calculating the BTU output with a probe in the return, as well as a probe over here in the supply. The first thing that we did is we used this Testo probe. The anemometer in the, in the discharge duct, so we're gonna say that the discharge duct is a four inch duct and we're gonna calculate how many CFMs come out of here. We calculated it to be 150 CFMs. Then through the app, we're gonna input that information. So if I go CFMs. The cooling output right now we're looking at just under 4,000 BTUs. And if we go and look at I actually have two shots that are able to read through this, so I'll put the Bluetooth one. to reduce it but we can see that we're drawing just over 28 amps and this is once again on a competitor's 5000 BTU or what's claimed as a 5000 BTU system so you can see based on the overall size. So I'm gonna pull the camera away and that way we can look at the size comparison. This is a 7,000 BTU. This is a 5,000 BTU. Let me look at the electrical box. Connections are going to be significantly easier. Uh, we have leads that come out of the electrical box, very easy to connect outside. This system here, and we had to use these jumpers for having a problem with the electrical box. But you can see this is a bit more difficult to do. The best I was able to fit into this box is 10 gauge wire, which is fine for a short run like this, giving the amperage, but once we start 
having longer lengths. I tried to put in number six wire originally, and I was unable to get that connector to fit. It would require some modification to make that happen. And you can see also the size of this box is significantly larger than the size of our box. I don't see the way of doing variable speed on this system, so I'm seeing it as a single speed. It's on or off versus our system having a variable speed capability to it. So we've gone enough through this one. We're seeing the information through it. Um, I'm gonna switch now and hook up the 7000 BTU uh, Mabor unit and compare what the differences are or what kind of readings we're seeing with that unit. Looking at this, I also wanted to go through the, uh, the dimensions. So I'm gonna show the 5000 BTU unit first and then I'll switch over to the 7000. As far as length goes, we're looking at, right around, we're looking at 17 inches 17 inches long. We have about 10 and 3 quarters high. And if we look at the overall width, the overall width is right around 9.5. Looking at the Mabor system, Our width is right around eight and a half. If we look at the height, the height's about, we'll say 11 and a half. And the overall length is 16. So the only length that we're larger in is actually in the height, in every other dimension we're actually smaller, which is, there's something to be said about that as well. Haven't hooked it up yet, so we're going to hook this up, get it running, and see what the difference in cooling is as well. Here at this time I'm running the 7000 BTU. I would say one of the more substantial differences you'll notice as well is going to be the sound level unit is significantly um, quieter and I think it'll translate pretty well into video. Right now what we're looking at is the is the Testo app where I'm gonna calculate the the CFMs coming out of the out of the 7000 BTU lower. I'm gonna show you as well how the duct work is set up because I wanted to mimic how I have the other unit so there's not a situation of oh uh, the dock work on the other unit was more restrictive, and that's why it wasn't cooling as much. So I'm going to use this right here. I'm going to go into the discharge of the unit and calculate how many CFMs we're getting out of the unit. Looking at that, we can all agree that we're looking at um, 200 TFMs, so a little bit different than what we're seeing on the other unit. And as well, while we're doing this, what I'll do is show as well how I have the duct work. So that same 90, I had it coming out 90 and then blowing out where you're here. So I wanted to mimic the same exact thing. Had it here, coming out, going against that wall and turning. So I think it's fair to say we can't say that this is an unfair advantage. Now I'll get the probes on and see what we have going on. So now we're looking at the 7000 BTUs, the SE7 DC um, by Mabro. We're running this unit now, uh, at the CFMs, input in the data. Right now we can see. Producing just under 7,000 BTUs. And if we look at the consumption, we'll see that we're drawing 26 amps, 26.7. 
1.7, just over 350 watts. So we're driving less power, producing more BTUs, less noise. Another difference is going to be when we compare the size of the electrical boxes. If we look at the two of these. This is the competitor's unit, and then this is ours. So it's, I would say, the better part of twice the size. So you also have, you also have to find room as well for this, um, for this electrical box. Another oddity is going to be the the, uh, the water connection. When we look over here, you can see that this hose is sitting on the pan. So unless we do something different here, with time, we're just going to chafe through this hose, and we're eventually going to have a water leak right here. And we can also see over here on the welds. And yeah, when you compare those welds to our welds. It makes that setup seem a little bit on the homemade side. I also enjoyed this one. Immediately get away if you hear sounds of arcing inside the compressor. It seems like a pretty, uh, pretty scary warning to have on a compressor. That you'd have to have a warning for that. 